Hello, 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 and welcome to Teacher Tidbits. I'm Lady Long, and today I'm super excited to share with you all how to set up a home school in a very small space. So if you are in an apartment, or you just don't have a dedicated room or a large space to set up and homeschool, you wanna stay tuned because I'm gonna show you guys the essentials that you need to set up your learning environments at home. So first things first guys, when you're in a small space, you wanna pick a hub area somewhere where everything is gonna kind of be centered around it for me that was this area in my house where i had a corner shelf i knew that i needed some place to place all my essentials things that i'm going to be needing on a day-to-day -day basis so i have here my books that i read throughout the week as well as my dry, dry erase markers and my stationery so for me my charts and all of my posters i did make i repurposed a diaper box so that way it would be sturdy i made everything out of cardboard but the reason i do this is so that way i can place it away you don't want to take up any of your precious wall space when you are in a small area okay and so that works best for small areas also this shelf is open shelving it's nothing closed so i do suggest that anything that your children use on a day-to-day -day basis you have it lower as well as the things that you use on a day-to-day -day basis, you have it higher up. And so on the lower shelves, I just have things that I feel confident for the girls to use and get to on their own. I do wanna say when you're in a small space, look at creative ways to repurpose things like this huge basket that was gifted to me. I've also repurposed those yellow Easter baskets from last year, but I kind of use it to categorize everything so everything has a place, okay? Again, this is a DIY that I've done here with our daily routine. I do want you to know it is interactive. It's something that I use, but it is not plastered to the wall. Why? Because I don't use it on the weekend and not every day are we practicing with the daily routine, if I can be honest. So the girls are starting to learn their routine and it may change over time. Versus here on the wall where I have our tree. Now I have this tape to the walls because I use it all year round. So that is something that I really highly suggest. If you're in a small space, only put things on the wall that are gonna stay permanently throughout the year so you don't take up too much of your precious wall space. Things that are going to change often, you wanna kinda have a place to tuck and hide them away. Now again, when you're in a small space, you want to think outside of the box. And so here I repurposed a crate that was given to me for our books. I didn't want to take up too much space with an actual bookshelf. Now forgive me for the way the books look because my two toddlers do put away their own toys. I have something that's important for me, which was having a dollhouse for the girls to play with and practice family dynamics with, but it's a dollhouse that folds away. And I also have a area where they have their dress up clothes I'm thinking about adding some hooks to the wall where it won't get so messy and you see here I have their blocks and I have their other toys that they play with most frequently which are these nursery toys for their dolls now I do want to say when you're in a small space these toys will switch out don't take out everything at once so I have here this grocery store but this is something that they're playing with now that I will switch out and change so I've brought in my three-year-old to help me show you guys how we run our morning circle. And you can see right next to my shelf, I have a full whiteboard. This is where we do all of our group work. Most of our lessons happen right here and they sit directly on the floor in this area now again in a small space you may not have a whiteboard but you can have a designated wall area you can even use a poster board or a project board anything like that for your main 
board. Now above that, I have a designated art space. And this is where I put their artwork. Now, I do wanna say if you have a small space like I do, you wanna have a designated area where you post the artwork solely and only, okay? So for you, that may look like your refrigerator, it may be in the children's bedroom, wherever you have that designated area, but you don't want the artwork spilling throughout the entire house. So you wanna kinda keep it confined. And this is it, you guys. This is my full homeschooling area. Besides the little table that I do have in our dining room, where the children eat and they do their table work. This is it. And so I wanted to scale it back to show you that it is literally just a corner of our living space and our current quarters. On the other side of this camera is the rest of our living room. And so if you have a small space, homeschooling is still possible. And I wanted to show you what even with these larger pieces like this supermarket, and if you even have a kitchen set, you can always pull them to the middle of the space and push them up against the wall when they're not in use. And this is it. To be successful with your homeschooling, all you need is a surface to sit, a surface to write, a place to put away your toys and your essentials. And that is it. It doesn't have to be stressful. And I hope that this was helpful to any of you. If it was, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. This is Teacher Tidbits. Happy learning!